God, I feel like this space is really, I feel like it's really bare. It says nothing about my channel. It is so hot in here. It's supposed to be winter. I can totally see a fly buzzing around right now. Okay, hopefully it doesn't disturb this video. I have no idea how it got in here. Open eye, feel the waves cut through me, hypnotized. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So every now and then on both this channel and on our daily vlogging channel, I'll get a comment or a question from somebody who's keen to start their own channel but not quite sure where to start and you know just wanting a little bit of advice or any tips and tricks that I can give to do so. And I know there's a lot of people out there who already have channels and are struggling to gain subscribers and are struggling to get those views. So seeing it is coming up to the one year anniversary since I started posting on this channel or since I created this channel altogether and I'm almost at that 90k subscriber mark which you know to some might be seen as nothing like there's plenty of youtubers out there with like two three four million subscribers who would see 90k subscribers as itty bitty and not something that you would classify as successful at all but then again on the flip side I know there's a lot of people out there who would just kill to have a thousand subscribers let alone 90 so I'm incredibly fortunate and incredibly blessed to have the following that I do and and I want you guys to know that I do not take that for granted and you guys are very very much appreciated. So today's video if you haven't guessed already is going to be tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to help grow a channel. So let's jump straight into them. Okay, so the first tip that I can give is decide what kind of videos you want to make. And I know that seems incredibly obvious, but when it came to me doing this channel, I always knew that I wanted to do a channel that was, you know, a bit more focused on like mums as an individual, not necessarily as a mum and, you know, the things we go through as individuals, but I didn't know exactly the kind of stuff I wanted to put out there. I just knew the stuff that I like to watch. So. Find something that you like or you're really good at and something that separates you from other people and then go and research as many people as you can on other YouTube channels that do the same kinds of things that you would like to do. Now don't get me wrong, we don't want to be copying anybody's ideas because, you know, YouTube, being successful on YouTube is largely about being original, I think. There's so many tags and copy videos out there which are great, they really are because, because I don't know about you guys but every now and then I'll get sucked into watching like 50 different thousand degree knife challenge videos or um, you know the the power of makeup videos like I love watching all of those chain videos but at the same time I love seeing new interesting content so what you want to do is look at a whole lot of other channels that you like and pick out elements and things that you like about those channels so really research what you do and don't like what's working for that creator what isn't working for that creator to help you develop a really solid idea of the kinds of stuff you want to be doing and give you a little bit of inspiration as to the kind of stuff you want to be doing, if that makes any sense. I know I just repeated myself like 18 times, but I hope I made my point a little bit clear out of all of that. So once you've decided the kinds of stuff you want to create, secondly, you want to go and research a bit of equipment that you'd like to use. Now, when you're just starting out, you may not have a lot of money to put towards expensive camera and lighting equipment. You can do a lot with your phone, but at the same time, in this day and age, you can't, it, it just seems like you can't be filming with dodgy old webcams or anything anymore. Like back in the day, that's how YouTube started out. And a lot of these huge, huge YouTubers with millions of subscribers, you'll go back and watch all their old videos and they just did it with webcams. You can't really get away with doing that anymore. And the reason for that is because you do want to separate yourself. And where that tends to start is A, your creativity and your uniqueness and B, the way you present your content. So if you don't have a lot of money to put towards lighting or camera equipment, do a little bit of research. If you have a little budget, try and find the best equipment you can find for that, for that amount of money. If not, there are other things you can do. You can find a lot of really good free music online. So put in the extra time into finding stuff which is really catchy and really interesting that's really going to appeal to your target demographic. So when I say your target demographic, I mean the age group, the gender, the um, nationality, the kinds of people that you are trying to target your content towards. 
and yeah, just find music that's going to appeal to them. Use colors that are going to appeal to them. You know, if you're a little bit creative with things like animation or um, design or anything like that, you can come up with some really nice thumbnail designs. You can come up with nice intro and end slate ideas that really draw people in, really catch people's attention. Because that's the first thing that people are going to look at when they see your channel. That is going to be what's going to separate people from hitting subscribe and just walking away. The third tip I'm going to give is once again, it's something that you're going to do before you start start your channel and that's to develop a little video library and when I say video library I just mean like a collection of a couple of videos that you can upload to your channel as soon as you create it so when new subscribers come in those first few weeks that you're uploading they're gonna have a little bit of variety to look at on your channel not just one video I know when I find a new youtuber that I like I'll always watch a couple of videos before I hit subscribe which gives me a bit of an idea of the kinds of different stuff they do so if you were trying to start say a fashion channel Channel, for example a couple of videos that you could start with might be like a winter wardrobe essentials so you could run out buy lots of pieces from different stores on a budget and put them all together do some really cute overlays if you're trying on the outfits and then doing voiceovers just to do a really cool stylized type video another kind that you could do would be maybe like a Oh goodness, maybe like one of the capsule wardrobe videos. I mean, I know those two videos are very similar, but a capsule wardrobe kind of shows the stuff that you already have in your wardrobe. And then the third option could be, maybe you could just be putting away your laundry, for example, like you could sit, in your wardrobe and put away your your laundry and show how you organize all of your clothes as something that's a little more chilled out, a little more chatty and shows off a little bit more of your personality. So as you can see, I've given you three very different videos that show different sides to you as a person. So that way when your new subscribers come along, they're getting a lot of variety and they get a good taste of what's to expect on your channel in the future and then they're going to be more likely to hit subscribe. Another little bonus with doing things that way is that YouTube's algorithms, which is like the YouTube, oh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like YouTube's way of deciding what's good content and what is not good content. And it's like an automatic process that happens when, an, when a video is uploaded. So if you open your channel and upload three videos on one day, YouTube's algorithms are going to favor that because you're showing consistency. You're showing that um, you want to be on YouTube. You're showing that you are motivated to upload content. Whereas if you've had a channel that you've had sitting there for six years and you've done nothing with, and then all of a sudden you upload one video, the algorithms are not gonna look on that as favorably because they're gonna see this channel that's been laying dormant for so long. They're gonna see that as a creator not really being motivated to upload content consistently so you probably want to opt to just start a new channel if you you know already have one scrap that start a completely new channel completely new name and upload three videos all on your first day of uploading next once you've actually started uploading that content to YouTube collaborate 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 this is the best in my opinion way to grow a channel but don't start too big i get so many people come onto my channel and leave comments saying oh hey like i just subbed to your channel sub for sub and if you're a new creator and believe me i don't you know really pay any attention to that it doesn't bother me but being a new creator you don't really understand that that's kind of rude to do that and the reason oh my phone's talking to me no Siri, I'm not interested in you right now. And so the reason why that is sort of considered to be a little bit rude is because it seems like you're just coming to me to get me to subscribe to you. And as well as that, I have people who comment and they're like, oh, I just found your channel today, wanna collaborate? And it's like, well, I mean, do you just want to collaborate with me because you like my YouTube numbers or do you want to collaborate with me because you like me as a person? So as a general rule, like if you'd really like to collaborate with somebody, it's always best practice to try and make friends with them first. So you could befriend them on Facebook or, you know, leave comments on their channel to let them know that you really do appreciate the content that they're making and you really do like them as a person. You're not just interested in having a relationship with them to gain your own subscribers, if that makes any sense. And sometimes you might be lucky enough to form a good relationship with someone who has way more subscribers than what you do and that can generally work in your favor if you do a collaboration and it helps you grow but if you don't really know anybody and you want to collaborate with people it's best to start small so just start with people who have 
roughly the same amount of subscribers you do. And a way that I try to explain that is, I don't know if you guys have heard that story of the little boy and his dad who started doing swapping with people. And they started out with something like a paper clip and then they swapped it for a pencil and then they swapped that pencil for a sharpener and then they uh, swapped that sharpener for like a textbook and they just kept going and going and going. They started out with a paper clip and they got to a house. And in the same way, you can start with a paper clip, you can start collaborating with people who have, you know, 10 more subscribers than you do. And then once you hit the hundreds, you can collaborate with somebody who has 200, 300 more subscribers than you do. Once you start hitting the thousands, you can collaborate with people who have a couple of thousand more subscribers than you. And you'll find that it doesn't take too long before you start really, really growing yourself as well. Just make sure that you're doing it in a nice way. And if you're really not sure how to get in touch with these people or you just feel really awkward about leaving comments on YouTube, there's always local Facebook groups. There are so many that I'm in that are like, you know, mummy related or just there's Facebook groups for creators in my local area. And if you just go and find those and join in on them, you'll often find people on there saying, hey, I'd really like to do this challenge video. Is there anyone out there who would like to work with me? So use those groups to find people who create the same kind of content as you do because you know that their audience is going to be wanting to watch the kind of stuff that you do and collaborate with them. Another really, really important tip once you have got your YouTube channel up and running is to monitor your stats. YouTube is amazing when it comes to being able to monitor all of your analytics. I can log into the back end and I can honestly see, you know, where all of my subscribers are coming from in the world, what percentage are male, what percentage are female, how old they are is another really big important factor and how long they're watching my videos for. So I can use that information and keep going back on it and adjusting my content to suit. So if I'm seeing that the people who are watching my videos are quite a bit younger than I am or quite a bit younger than what I thought they would be, I can start adjusting my content to try and gear it towards people of a younger age range. So things that I think that they might be more interested in doing. Another way that you can use these tools is looking at the times and days that your subscribers are watching your videos the most commonly. So what, when, at what times of the day most people are watching your videos and you're gonna wanna upload videos at that time and on those days so that you're getting the highest engagement possible in those first few hours of your video being live. And the algorithms are gonna favor that heavily. And I hope I'm not getting too confusing there. Like I've explained that YouTube's algorithm, I hope I've explained it, otherwise I'm just like, making myself sound like a huge idiot right now. But YouTube's algorithm is like their way of deciding what is good content. And so stuff that's getting high engagement, high views, high comments, high thumbs up, in those first few hours of uploading are gonna be considered good content from YouTube. So they're gonna promote it. They're gonna promote it in their suggested videos or in their next up features or on their YouTube homepage. So that's gonna be your opportunity to reach new audiences. That's why you wanna try and get your engagement up in those first few hours. You also want to make sure that you are interacting with your subscribers in the comments section because that's another thing that YouTube's algorithms favor. If you're commenting back to people within the first few hours of uploading a video and I for one am terrible at this, but when you're doing that, you're creating more engagement in those critical first few hours of uploading a video. And by doing that, you're also getting a taste of the type of people who are subscribed to you. You're learning about your subscribers and you're learning about the kinds of things that they wanna see. So it helps you tailor all of the content that you're creating. Now, obviously, once your channel does start to grow, you may not have the time to respond to absolutely everybody who sends you a comment. So there's a few different ways that YouTubers do it. Some people just, answer say 50, the first 50 questions. I probably do that because I get super OCD with who to respond to and who not to respond to. I just try to make it clear that there's a certain time frame that I spend on answering the comments on each video and I try to answer everybody in that time. Whereas other people might be a little more selective about the comments they answer. They might just answer people who ask a question as opposed to people saying like, first sub or yay, you uploaded a video or something like that, which doesn't necessarily um, require a response. I just like to, I don't know, if someone's like, hey, I love you, Ash. I wanna be like, no, I love you, girl. So um, that's how I do it. Everybody does it differently though, and it doesn't really matter. So long as you're taking that time to engage with the people who are spending their time supporting your channel, it's really important that you do give the love back to your subscribers. So try, 
to make sure that that is a priority. And once again, that is gonna be something that the algorithms favor because it's increasing the engagement, it's increasing the conversation going on that particular video. So YouTube's gonna be like, hey, this seems like a good video. Or hey, this creator is really dedicated to their craft. They're spending time responding to everybody who comments on their video. And so now that I've spent all this time talking about how important the algorithm is and you know, you're wanting to try and do things to work in the algorithm's favor, I'm talking about the algorithm like it's like, I don't know, Big Brother or something. Sometimes it feels like it, honestly, with the way YouTubers talk about the algorithm. I know I certainly feel that way sometimes. Um, but one thing that you definitely do not want to be doing to impress the algorithm and that is creating clickbait and that is why people create clickbait because they do something they get a really edgy title or they get a really crazy thumbnail to try and draw people in then people start watching that video it's going to get high engagement in those first few hours since uploading and YouTube is going to start promoting that video and it may be you guys know clickbait it's just something that people put on a video. It's just a catchy title or a crazy thumbnail that doesn't necessarily say anything about the video itself. And while that is a proven means of getting views on YouTube, it's also a touch unethical. I try not to do it. It's semi dangerous. You start getting people like this daddy of five who feel like they should do like harmful things to people in order to get views. And I think that's where YouTube goes wrong. YouTube should be about the creators, about people creating exciting new things. It shouldn't be about people resorting to cheap tricks in order to get views and gain money. So try and not do that because once you start doing it as well, your subscribers are gonna lose faith in you. And the one thing that you don't want to happen is to have your subscribers, the people who follow you and support you, to lose their faith in you because they are the ones who are helping you grow. So it's important to look after them. Anyway, they are all the tips I have for today. My camera battery is about to die, so I'm hoping it like just lasts until the end of this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I already said that. I apologize if I did. It's been a long day. But let me know in the comments what you thought of it. I really would like to hear, you know, if you guys want to see more videos like this. And like I said in the video, give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Support my channel if you like my content, and I'll support you guys right back. Obviously, I'm not a humongous YouTuber, and there there are still so many of these tips that I've given along the way, which I've done at some stages and not done at others purely because I'm lazy. So, you know, the channel hasn't been growing as fast as what it was before. And that is a, re a direct result of me not always following some of these tips that I've given. But I guarantee you by following these tips, you're giving yourself the best possible chance for growth. And even though I'm sure there's plenty of other people with way more subscribers out there who know plenty of tips and tricks that I don't know about, I hope this gives you a little bit of motivation and a little bit of something to work off if you are considering starting your own channel. So as per usual, like I said, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you're new and want to see more videos like this. I would actually be keen to do like, you know, video setup and that kind of stuff. So if you guys want to see stuff like that, let me know. And other than that, I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.